Nitya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Can you share the screen with me? How can I? You don't know how to do it, huh? Okay. Yes, you are. I cannot. Ajana, Sret Guru Maharaj, been co-host. Did I make co-host? We don't even need a make host. Then the only thing, Tanya. Then who make? Then make Guru Maharaj host, then my. Then make Guru Maharaj host. Then there will be a new person coming. We have to add. อ่านมิตรมันต้องมันต้องเป็นอ่านยากให้เข้าซูมไงเอ่อโอเคจัสแมทเอาโอเควิลอาจัสยูอาจัสรีดมายเซลฟอิทดัสแมทเทอร์
แล้วเขาก็ต้องมีการรู้แจ้งว่าความจริงแล้วเนี่ยตัวเขาเนี่ยเป็นดวงวิญญาณแล้วก็ตัวเขาเนี่ยเป็นรัฐธรรมชาติของดวงวิญญาณก็คือเป็นผู้รับใช้องค์พระขวัญคริชนา So one who is in proper consciousness, who's in Krishna consciousness, he won't hanker. He doesn't desire to get anything material, and he doesn't lament about anything either. Some people they they they're always thinking about the future, what they want to get. They have a lot of desires, what they want to get in the future. So that's not good. And some people are very much worried. They think about the past. They think about what happened. They think, "Oh, I had a lot of bad luck, and things didn't go well for me," and they lament a lot about their past. So somebody who is actually Krishna conscious, who is actually the word Prabhupada uses here is dira, that he's he's not disturbed by the material energy. So he understands that he's got a material body and mind, and it's given to him. Due to by his previous association. But but he knows that he's not the body and he's not the mind. He knows these things are they're, they're not actually him. That he is a soul. So he has to. He the 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 this uh, person who is a dira who is Krishna devotee. He will make the best use of the body. It's like a bad bargain to have a material body and a material mind. It's a bad bargain. But he will try to use them in the service of Krishna. Material body, material mind are not good for spiritual. Life. But we have to use them in Krishna's service. So we're all uh, spirit souls, and we belong to the spiritual world. But we're here in the material world. This material world is like a dead world. Everything is material. It's like it's dead. So the only thing which gives life to the material body is because the soul is in the body. So because the spirit souls are in the bodies, so all these dead bodies look like they're alive. So 
So we think we're in a, we think the world is alive. You're thinking all the people, all the living entities in this world are alive, but actually their bodies are dead. Or the only thing which is alive is the soul. So it's the soul which gives life to this world. The spirit souls are giving life and making everything move in this world. And those who are uh, qualified people, those who are in good uh, knowledge, Krishna consciousness, they will know this because they hear from the they hear from the authorities. They have under, they understood this knowledge by following the regulative principles. They've understood everything. Okay, so it's, they have, in order to follow, the, 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 they have to, they understand this knowledge because they follow the regulative principles. And the regulative principles are taught by the spiritual teacher. The, the knowledge and the regulative principles are passed from the guru to the disciple through the disciplic succession. So spiritual knowledge is not like material education. If you're going to be successful in spiritual life, you have to hear carefully from a spiritual teacher. Just like Arjuna, he heard very carefully from Lord Krishna. The Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord himself and Arjuna heard directly from him. So Arjuna is the perfect disciple and Krishna is the perfect spiritual teacher. So if we want to learn transcendental knowledge, which is called Vidya, we have to learn it from somebody who is undisturbed by the material energy, who is Dira. So in order to become Dira, you have to be trained by the spiritual teacher. 
นะถ้าเราก็สามารถเป็นดีระได้แล้วก่อนที่เราจะเป็นดีระเนี่ยเราจะต้องได้รับการสอนฝึกฝึกปฏิบัติจากพระอาจารย์คิดก่อน And if one is not properly trained, then he cannot become a good leader. So, Prabhupada said, we get in the modern times, you get people like politicians who who actually imitate that they're dira, they're they're thinking, they're actually very educated and very learned, and they claim they know. Spiritual knowledge. The s e r a n t i b a a p o n a k a n m e n e s a m a p a u b a n a a a n t o n e m a t o n e a p e n d i r a t a t a n i t i n g m e n m e s h a i But these people who these politicians, they're not actually properly trained and educated, and so you cannot expect to get perfect knowledge from them. Their only interest is in getting money. They want to get the dollar, get the money. They're thinking only how to get, make a lot of money for themselves. So if they're only thinking about money, they won't be able to guide the people to become self-realized, to become happy in spiritual life. So if you want to actually get the proper knowledge, you have to hear it from. The qualified person. That that is proper education, good education. Okay, so we're going to go on now to mantra eleven. วิญญาณชวิญญาณชยัสทัดเวดโอปายมสหะอาวิญญาณมฤตจัมทิรวะวิญญาณมฤตัมอาชนเต One only one who has who can learn the process of n a t i o n s and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death. And enjoy the full blessings of immortality. คำแปลบุคคลที่สามารถเรียนรู้กรรมวิธีแห่งอวิชชาและกรรมวิธีแห่งความรู้ทิพย์ควบคู่กันไปเท่ากันไอ้ควบคู่กันไปเท่านั้นจึงสามารถข้ามพ้นอิทธิพลแห่งการเกิดและการตายสัมซากพร้อมกับรื่นเริงกับพรอันเป็นอัมตะ So we should understand from this mantra. That we have to learn both transcendental knowledge and material knowledge. And then we can get the real mercy. We can get free of birth and death. We should remember the real goal of life is to get free of birth and death. So s h r i l a Prabhupada writes in the purport that from the beginning of time, in the material world, people have been trying to make. A permanent. They want want to live in this world forever. They want to make a permanent life. They want to stay here forever. But in other words, they don't want to die. But the law of nature, the laws of nature, are so cruel. That nobody is able to avoid it. Everybody dies. 
แต่ว่ากฎแห่งธรรมชาตินี้เนี่ยมันโหดร้ายมากเราไม่มีใครเนี่ยที่จะสามารถหลีกเลี่ยงตรงหลีกเลี่ยงความตายได้ Nobody wants to die Nobody wants to become old Nobody wants to become diseased But it happens ไม่มีใครเนี่ยอยากตายไม่มีใครอยากแก่ไม่มีใครอยากจะเป็นโรคแต่ว่ามันเป็นสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นกับทุกคน It happens to everyone everyone becomes old everyone gets disease and everyone will die ทุกคนเนี่ยอยากจะแก่เอ่อทุกคนเนี่ยต้องแก่ทุกคนต้องเจ็บป่วยแล้วทุกคนต้องตาย And although we have advanced in a lot of technology and we have a lot of knowledge, we haven't been able to solve the problem of birth and death. And although people have developed things like the bomb, big bombs, nuclear bombs, that's only making people die quicker. So they make things to kill people, but they don't make anything to protect people. เวลาเขาเนี่ยจะสร้างสิ่งที่ทําให้คนตายเนี่ยได้แต่ว่าสร้างสิ่งนี้แบบจะทําให้คนเกิดไอ้คนไม่ตายเนี่ยมันไม่ได้ They cannot protect us from old age They cannot protect us from disease and they cannot protect us from death สิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะช่วยเราจากความแก่ได้ความเจ็บไข้ได้ป่วยหรือว่าความตาย You can see everybody had to get vaccination, but still there's disease. Still there's so many COVID. Still it's there. Everybody getting it, and they said get vaccinated, get vaccinated, and still there's disease. Didn't stop the disease. ถึงแม้เขาจะมีวิธีการป้องกันเนี่ยเช่นเขาบอกว่ามีวัคซีนมาที่จะช่วยได้แต่ถึงแม้จะมีการฉีดวัคซีนหรือว่าได้รับวัคซีนไปก็แล้วแต่คนก็ยังติดโควิดกันคนก็ยังเป็น So in the Puranas, there's a story about the great king Haranyakashipu, who was a great materialist. So Haranyakashipu wanted to conquer death. He didn't want to die. อยากจะพิชิตความตายเขาเนี่ยไม่อยากจะตาย So he was very powerful and he did a lot of meditation and he did a lot of austerities แล้วเขาก็พยายามปฏิบัติความเพียรปฏิบัติสมถะหลายประการเพื่อที่จะตนเองแบบว่าไม่ต้องตาย And all the people in the heavenly in the higher planets they were disturbed by his mystic power แล้วก็แม้แต่ความสมถะของเขาทำเยอะมากจนไปจนก่อการรบกวนให้กับชาวสวรรค์ and he forced he forced Lord Brahma he for he worshipped he got Lord Brahma to come down and Lord Brahma had to give him benedictions แล้วเขาทำปฏิบัติสมถะถึงพระพรหมอย่างอย่างแรงจนพระพรหมต้องเหมือนกับเชิงบังคับพระพรหมให้ลงมาให้พรเขาบอกว่าต้องลงมาเขาถามพระพรหมว่าฉันต้องการบริบทที่ฉันจะไม่ตายดังนั้นพระพรหมบอกว่าฉันไม่สามารถที่จะให้คุณได้แต่ฉันก็ต้องให้คุณได้ตอนแรกพอพระพรหมปรากฏเนี่ยเขาบอกเลยว่าถ้าอยากจะได้พรแห่งการเป็นอมตะแบบไม่ตายเขาบอกว่าถ้าอยากจะได้พรแห่งการเป็นอมตะแบบไม่ตายพระพรหมบอกว่าอ๋อฉันให้ไม่ได้หรอกนะพรประการนั้นเพราะว่าตัวฉันเองยังจะต้องตาย Brahm, although Brahma has a very long life, but still he, his life comes to an end. So this was a disappointment for the big materials, Haranyakashipu. 
ราะฉะนั้นอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่น่าเซียนในราศีพุธรู้สึกผิดหวังมากเป็นอะไรที่เขาแบบรู้สึกผิดหวัง So Haranya his name is very interesting Haranya means gold and Kashipu means soft bed เพราะฉะนั้นชื่อของเขาเนี่ยมันก็มีความหมายอยู่คำว่า Haranya แปลว่าทองคำแล้วก็ Kashipu เนี่ยแปลว่าเตียงนุ่ม So he was interested in two things. He was interested in money, and he was interested in women. And he thought if he can become immortal, if he won't die, then he can enjoy them all the time. So he asked Brahma for many benedictions. But Brahma said, "I can't give. You, I can't stop you from dying. Everybody is going to die." And Brahma said, "I will also die, so I can't help you there." So Rani Kashipu said, "Then I don't want to be killed by any man, or any animal, or any god, or any other living being." And he said, "I don't want to die on the land, or in the air, or in water." And I don't want to be killed by any weapon. So Lord Brahma gave these benedictions to Harani Kashipu. So Harani Kashipu thought, "Now I won't die. Now I'll live forever." But still, although Brahma gave him all these benedictions, he got killed by Lord Nishingadev. Right, Lord Nishingadev, half lion, half man incarnation, and he didn't have any weapon. He just killed him with his nails. The lion has very long, sharp nails, and and he, he can he, he can kill people with his nails. And Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev didn't kill him on the land, or in the air, or in the water. He killed him on his lap. And Lord Nishingadev was not one of the eight million four hundred thousand living entities on this of, of of the material world. Lord Nishingadev is. The Lord Himself. So, though this demon Harani Kashipu was very powerful, he was killed by the plan of the Lord. So this Harani Kashipu was very powerful. So today there's people like Harani Kashipu, but they're nowhere near powerful as Harani Kashipu. 
The original Harangi Kashipui was very powerful. Today, Harangi Kashipus, you know, they're of the same nature, but they're not as powerful as the one a long time ago. So the original Harangi Kashipu could not defeat Lord Nishringadev. We will never be able to defeat Lord Nishringadev. So the Sri Ishopanishad, this book, is telling us don't try to fight against this material nature, the law of nature. You won't be you won't be able to avoid birth and death in this material world. Everyone is trying hard to get to to enjoy the material world. But the material nature is very powerful. We cannot defeat it. You cannot you cannot get eternal life in the material world. If you want eternal life, you have to go back to Godhead. So, how to go back to Godhead? We have to understand there's a process to go back to Godhead. And we can learn from books like this Sri Ishopanishad and the Bhagavad Gita. They will teach us how we can go back to Godhead. So if we want to be happy in this life, and if you want to get eternal life after this life, you have to become devotee, you have to become Krishna conscious. And we have to develop, we have to read this book like Sri Shopanishad and we have to learn the knowledge which is taught there. So, the problem is we have forgotten our relationship with the Supreme Lord. So we have made the mistake of trying to make an we're trying to find an eternal place in the material world. It's not possible. Arjuna.
Okay. Oh, good afternoon. Sorry. Oh, uh, this is my personal Zoom. That's why the time is limited, Guru Maharaj. I know it's only the, it's only forty minutes. I think. Do you get forty? Yeah. Forty minutes, and then you have to log in again. Oh yes. Okay, Guru. We have another forty minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're we're trying to make an, a permanent place for ourselves in the material world. That's not possible. We have to understand our real home is not here in this world. Our real home is in the spiritual world. We're not we're not material bodies. We're spirit souls, and our spirit soul belongs in the spiritual world. And the Supreme Lord sends his pure devotees. He sends his pure devotees into this world to teach us how to go back to Godhead. And sometimes he come the Lord will come himself to do this work. Just like he came here 5,000 years ago to speak Bhagavad Gita. And then he came 500 years ago as Lord Chaitanya. Okay, so we're all spirit souls and we're all like we're all like sons of the Supreme Lord. We are his parts and parcels. And the Lord is very sorry to see us suffering in the material world. <laughs> We're constantly taking birth and dying in the material world. It's not pleasing to the Supreme Lord Krishna. He doesn't like to see us suffer. But the, 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 there's a purpose behind the miseries in this material world. And the purpose is to remind us that we don't belong here in this material world. This, this material world is not our real home. So intelligent people, they'll understand these things and they will cultivate pure spiritual knowledge. So to have the human form of life is the best opportunity for getting spiritual knowledge. And if we don't use the human life to get this knowledge, then we are considered the lowest of human beings. And if we try to cultivate avidya, we want to cultivate material knowledge for our sense gratification, 
then that's very dangerous. Means we will have to take birth again and again in the material world. Of course, we are all spiritual beings. We are spirit souls. We are eternal souls. We don't have to, the soul doesn't die. The soul doesn't take birth, but we change the body. Just like when you die, it's like taking off the clothes. And when you take birth, then you put on a new dress, you get another, a new body, you put on a new body, put on new dress. So some people are very absorbed in the material knowledge and they don't, they don't worry about taking birth, they don't worry about old age and disease. Some people are very attached to the material world. They think the material world is so beautiful. And they never learn. They never learn about the nature of the material world. They're thinking the world is just there for them to enjoy. So it's really important for people to get spiritual education and to learn transcendental knowledge. So, the disease of material life is to want sense gratification. And people have to be trained to stop all that sense gratification, try to try to control it and if possible to give it up. People have if people have more and more sense gratification, then that's the path of ignorance and will take them to death. So we should understand that we also have a spiritual body and we have spiritual senses. So in our original spiritual form, we have all the senses. But in this material world, our spiritual body and our spiritual senses are covered by the material body and material senses. And the material senses are just a perverted reflection of the spiritual senses. 
ที่เป็นวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นรูปของการในรูปแบบของกลับตลปัดจากประสาทสัมผัสที่เป็นทิศ so we're diseased we're in this we're, we're all in this diseased condition เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วพวกเราเนี่ยจึงพวกเราจึงจัดอยู่ในประเภทที่เป็นโรคโรคทางวัตถุ So we have to understand that there is real sense enjoyment, but that's not with the material senses. เราจะต้องเข้าใจว่ามันมีการมันมีความสุขที่เราจะได้จากการสนองประสาทสัมผัสในแบบทิปแต่มันไม่ใช่ความสุขที่ได้จากการสนองประสาทสัมผัสแบบวัตถุ If we get, if we can get rid of the material contamination, the covering of our material body, and awaken our spiritual body, then we can get real enjoyment. แล้วเมื่อไรก็แล้วแต่ที่เราสามารถที่จะข้ามพ้นตื่นที่เราจะสามารถทำให้จิตสำนึกทิพย์แล้วประสาทสัมผัสทิพย์ของเราตื่นได้เนี่ยตอนนั้นเนี่ยเราจะสามารถมีสามารถรู้ถึงความสุขแบบทิพได้อย่างแท้จริง Prabhupada gives the example. He said, just like a sick person, he has to get his health back before he can properly enjoy his material body again. ก็มาให้ตัวอย่างของคนที่เป็นโรคคนที่เป็นโรคเนี่ยคือเขาจะต้องรักษาอาการโรคนั้นให้หายซะก่อนก่อนที่เขาจะสามารถมามีความสุขกับ So, human life, the the goal of human life is not to just enjoy the material body. Uh, จุดมุ่งหมายของชีวิตมนุษย์เนี่ยไม่ได้หมายไว้เพื่อที่จะสนองความสุขกับร่างวัตถุนี้อย่างเดียว We have to we have to cure the material disease. เราจะต้องรักษาโรค If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. If we make the disease worse, then that's very foolish. เราเนี่ยไม่ได้อยากจะทำให้โรคตรงนี้ของเราเนี่ยเพิ่มขึ้นแต่เราเนี่ยอยากจะทำให้โรคที่เป็นอันนี้ของเราเนี่ยหายไป Just like if you have a fever, so you don't want to increase the fever, you want to bring the temperature down to the normal condition. เหมือนกับการตอนที่เวลาที่เรามีไข้แต่ว่าเรามีไข้สูงเนี่ยเราก็ไม่อยากจะให้ไข้เนี่ยมันเพิ่มขึ้นแต่เราอยากจะให้ไข้มันลดลง If you increase the fever, then it's no good. You get worse. You you want to reduce the fever and bring the body temperature down to the normal level. If we have cold, then we have cold. 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 อันนั้นเนี่ยเป็นจุดมุ่งหมายของชีวิตมนุษย์นั่นเองชีวิตจุดมุ่งหมายก็คือทำให้เราหายจากโรค But in the modern society we see people all they just try to increase the temperature they want to increase the fever แต่ในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยเราสามารถเห็นได้ว่าผู้คนเนี่ยพยายามที่จะสิ่งที่พวกเขาทำอยู่เนี่ยมันคือการเพิ่มมันคือเพิ่มโรคที่เป็นวัตถุนี้ให้เพิ่มขึ้น And Prabhupada gives some examples about how they increase the fever. I said, just like they've made these atom bombs. So, because of people have got these big bombs. At any moment, they could blow up the whole world with their bombs. Because of them, they have a big bomb. So, if 
าเกิดความไม่พอใจเขาจะสามารถระเบิดอันตัวเนี้ยเมื่อไรก็ได้ so that is their advancement of material knowledge อันนั้นคือประโยชน์ที่เขาได้ความพัฒนาในส่วนของความรู้ทางวัตถุที่เขาเรียกกัน and if people don't take care of this 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 is the waste of the human life. If they don't take, they have to pay attention to what is the real duty of human life. They spend so much time and money for material knowledge, but they never take any time. To cultivate their spiritual knowledge. So this mantra is telling us we should not go to hell. We should be careful what we do in this life. Okay, so we have to develop the culture of spiritual knowledge. And it's only by spiritual knowledge that we can get free from birth and death. At the same time, we have to take care of the material body. We cannot just stop all all of our activities. You still have to take care to keep working and keep taking care of the body. Just like somebody's got a fever, okay, so they've got a high temperature. That doesn't mean you take away all the temperature and. Let them have no temperature. Yeah, we have we have to know how to we have to bring the body to the healthy temperature. So to cultivate spiritual knowledge, we need the help of our body and our mind. So if we're going to if we're going to get free of birth and death, we have to we have to use the body and the mind. To help us to get out of the material world. So we have to bring the body to its normal temperature. And the acharyas and the spiritual teachers they teach us how to do this, how to bring the body to the healthy temperature. We have to have a balanced program. We have to cultivate both spiritual knowledge and material knowledge. And we have to give up material sense gratification. So 
So sense gratification has to be regulated according to the Vedas. So in the Vedas, the Vedas describe four goals, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, religion, economic development, sense gratification and liberation. But now, but now today in modern society people they don't want religion and they don't ever think about liberation. They want economic development, means they want more money. And with that more money, they want sense gratification. They want to enjoy their senses. So they spend all their time to get economic development, to make money for their sense gratification. And some foolish people, they think the purpose of religion is just so that you can get economic development for sense gratification. And they think that people practice religion just so they can get sense gratification after death. They think after death we'll go to heaven and we'll enjoy there. And in order to go to heaven, they'll practice some religion so that they can enjoy in heaven. But this is not actual religion. Real religion is actually meant for self-realization. Economic development is okay. We can use it to maintain the body, to keep the body healthy. People should have a healthy life. And they should use their mind to understand spiritual knowledge. So the, this life is not meant for just working hard to make money. That is a waste of the human life. Okay, we'll stop there today. We take questions, Gurmash. Yes. Are there any questions? Uh, Okay, there you go.
how to proceed. Okay. But the keep the card. Tell her. Hare Krishna, Kulu Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Yes. All glory to Jila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Kama Taji. พอดีผมมีข้อสงสัยเกี่ยวกับจากสีมัดพระกวัตตามครับที่ว่าพระพรมให้กําเนิดพระศิวะขึ้นมาแต่ทําไมพระพรมยังต้องบูชาพระศิวะหรือยอมรับพระศิวะเป็นมหาเทพสูงส่งกว่าตนครับโอเคครับฮาริกิสเนี่ยกุลมาราชิสคุยชันเอสจากสีมัดพระกวัตตามเขาบอกว่า Uh, he read it. Uh, it said that Lord Shiva come take birth from Lord Brahma, and why Lord Brahma have to worship him or consider him to be superior than him? Yes. Yes. Well, you have to, Lord. Lord Shiva, actually, there's there's different forms of Lord Shiva. The, the Shiva who took birth from Brahma, that was actually Rudra. Rudra is a, another form of Shiva, a special form of Shiva. Mm -hmm. What, ha what happened was, Lord Shiva, uh, Lord Brahma, his first sons were the four Kumaras, and the four Kumaras, they didn't want to marry. They said, "We're just going to stay young. We're not going to grow up. We'll always be young children, and we want to go for self-realization. We don't want to have anything to do with material life." ลูกต่อคนแรกของพระพรหมก็คือสี่กุมารเราว่าให้กําเนิดสี่กุมารก่อนพอให้กําเนิดมาปุ๊บเนี่ยสี่กุมารบอกว่าเสด็จพ่อผมเนี่ยไม่อยากพวกเราไม่อยากจะโตแล้วด้วยแล้วพวกเราก็ไม่อยากจะไปสร้างมันอะไรแล้วพวกเราเนี่ยอยากจะเดินไปในทางแห่งการรู้แจ้งแห่งตนแล้วพวกเราอยากจะอยู่เป็นเด็กแบบนี้ตลอดไป so Lord Brahma, he wanted them to actually help him to populate the universe. That's one of the functions of Lord Brahma, that he has to fill up the universe. He has to arrange for all the living entities to occupy the different planets in the universe. <laughs> So when the four Kumaras told Lord Brahma that they didn't want to get married, they didn't want to help their father to populate the universe, Lord Brahma was not pleased with them, and he became angry. And from the anger, Lord Shiva came out from his forehead. ลูกลูกทั้งสี่เนี่ยก็จะบอกกับพระพรหมว่าอ๋อผมพวกเราไม่อยากจะแต่งงานพวกเราไม่อยากจะมีลูกไม่อยากจะช่วยคุณพ่อครับพอพูดแบบนี้ปุ๊บปรากฏว่าพระพรหมไม่ปลื้มพอพระพรหมไม่ปลื้มเนี่ยพระพรหมก็รู้สึกโกรธหรือว่าโมโหนั่นเองพอพระพรหมโมโหเนี่ยก็มีรูดระหรือพระศิวะเนี่ยปรากฏออกมาจากหน้าผากของพระพรหม There are three modes of nature in the material world: goodness, passion, and ignorance. มีในโลกวัตถุเนี่ยมีอยู่ด้วยกันสามระดับก็คือระดับแห่งความดีระดับปัญหาและระดับอวิชชา Lord Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion because he has to do creation for the purpose of creation you have to have passion และพระพรหมเนี่ยเป็นผู้เป็นเทพเจ้าที่ดูแลในส่วนของระดับปัญหาและพระพรหมก็ดูในส่วนของการสร้างนั่นเองเพราะว่าในการสร้างอะไรเนี่ยเราจะต้องมีคนระดับตันหาคุณมาส์ I got notification said 10 minutes okay 10 minutes alright and so 
Vishnu, he does the maintenance. He will keep the... It's very difficult to maintain passion. To get something started takes passion, but it's more difficult to maintain. So Vishnu does the maintenance. Brahma does creation, Vishnu does maintenance, and Shiva will do destruction. So that's Lord Shiva's function in the universe, that he, does, he, he will do the dance of destruction at the end of the universe. But Lord Shiva does many other services. He doesn't just only destroy. He's active also at the beginning of the universe when there's creation. And he's active also with maintenance. He helps Lord Vishnu to maintain. Sometimes Lord Shiva will kill some demons who are disturbing the universe. So just because Lord Shiva appeared from the mind, from the forehead of Brahma doesn't mean... We see Lord Krishna also appears. It appears like Lord Shiva, Lord Krishna is taking birth. He comes as the son of Nanda and Yashoda. Yeah, but it's a pastime. In the same way Lord Shiva comes from the forehead of Brahma. It's a pastime. <laughs> It doesn't mean that Lord Shiva is less than Brahma. Lord Shiva is he's, he's higher than Brahma. We, if you analyze the different qualities, you'll see that Lord Brahma, in his best condition, he can have 50 qualities out of 64. But Lord Shiva, he has 55 qualities out of the 64 qualities of Lord Krishna. <laughs> So Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava. We say he, Vaishnavam yata shambhu. He is the greatest Vaishnava. So they have mutual respect for each other. Lord Shiva will respect Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma will give respect to Lord Shiva. So we have to understand their dealings. Their dealings are, you know, they're not ordinary persons. Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they're not ordinary living entities. They're very special, very elevated persons in the universe. Yeah, both are the same. And Lord Shiva, he has his own residence, Kailash. Kailash is between the material world and the spiritual world. 
แล้วทางเราทรงมีที่อยู่ของเราองค์ที่พิเศษที่ชื่อว่าเคยลาสเคยลาสในอยู่ระหว่างโลกทิพย์และโลกวัตถุ People who are Buddhists They would often, they may often go there. They they're sent there to Lord Shiva's place. But it's not the spiritual world. It's between the material world and the spiritual. Ah, not the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any other question? Maybe we will stop there today since we don't have proper connection. Okay, good. Okay. Is there any other questions? I don't see any other. Okay. Yes. All right. So thank Archana for her translation. We thank all the devotees for listening, and we'll be back on Monday. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada ki. Yes. Gorbhati Vrinda ki.